Well, welcome to this talk, and we're delighted to welcome back Professor Norman Fenton. Norman, thank you for joining us again. Always a pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having me on. And talk today, we want to talk about this data from Canada, I believe, Norman, the, the excess deaths in Canada, which we did mention on a video a few days ago, and you were kind enough to give some expert advice on. Yeah. So if we have a look at this graphic now, perhaps you can uh, tell, tell us what it's uh, basically about. So what are we looking at here, Norman? This is the uh, the Canadian excess deaths data for Canada for 2022. Yeah, so in fact, this is from the, the official, uh, an official Canadian website. I'll have to, I need to say something more about the limitations of the data that's on that website, but we'll take this at, at face value. The, the thing is here, what exactly do we mean by excess deaths? A lot of people have a kind of like a, not a terribly clear understanding of what that is, because... It's actually really it's really complex to um, to know what to actually measure what uh, excess deaths really are because you have to know what constitutes the normal range of deaths in any given period that you're looking at. So here they're plotting. This is supposed to be plotting excess deaths in each week of 2022. But how do we know what the normal uh, expected deaths are? Now, typically, the normal range. Or the baseline, if, if as they sometimes. This call is it. the lower blue line, the light blue line, Norman. Is it? Yeah. So that that will be determined by uh, looking at, um, let's say, a number of the most recent previous normal years. Sometimes it's five, sometimes it's ten. So you'll have those. So for each week, you'll have, let's say, five or ten years of previous uh, of the de number of deaths in that particular week because obviously you've got seasonal changes. Um, and what they'll then do is they'll use some statistical methods, not only to do things like adjust for population changes over the years, but also to come up with a range, a so-called, they usually use a 95% confidence interval range, because instead of giving an, uh, a, a single value, they'll give a range. Now here, interestingly enough, um, they've only given the... Uh, so there's a let's say there's a 95% confidence interval, which in lay terms, although this is not strictly true, this this will be um, the range between which we're 95% let's say confident that the normal uh, figure should appear within that range. And that's the yeah. red dotted line, Norman, is it? So the red dotted line here is the upper 90. So that's the upper 95% percentile. What they don't show here is the lower upper, uh, lower percentile, right? But what they do is show the expected one, which is the one in the middle. No, it's normally in the middle between the, the lower and the upper. So they don't show the lower range here. They only show the upper range and the expected value, which is the, which is the mean of that, of whatever distribution they fit to this. So mm. that's the average number. So the whole point is, why do they only show... It, it's, it's sensible that they only show the, the upper value here, because what's that, what it's saying that we're only interested really in whether if it goes above that, then we're, we should be pretty confident, like 95 percent confident that something really above the, above the average is happening, above the normal is happening. But it's nearly all year, Norman, isn't it? Nearly it's all only, the time. In fact, it's, on, it's only it's only um, the 22nd of January where it's above the average. There's only one week where it's above the average. And there's only that period um, when, when, it's below, when it's below the average. It's above the average all year, isn't it? So it's above the average all year, sorry, but it's, there's, there's the only period where it's not above the upper percentile mm. is, a very, is a few number of weeks in, in the winter there. Got you. So that means we can be, pretty, com we can be uh, pretty confident that all throughout the year, except for maybe a couple of weeks, we've got this uh, quite significant excess deaths. And if you mm. look at the, the peak there, uh, sorry, the only time it's below it, I said January, and I, said, I think because I find it hard to see it here, it's around March time there was a, mm. a severe. But if you look at that, that, that peak, for example, in January, we don't have to worry about, you know, what's the reason for this. You know, there's something unusual that's happening here, whether it's mm. the Omicron or whether it's the uh, whatever is my other, whether it's some medical interventions or lockdowns which are causing these uh, excess deaths, we don't know. But if you look at that January figure, for example... Then what it what it what what it tells you is that um, I'm just looking at the, trying to yeah it tells you that there were at least one seven one thousand seven hundred fifty one excess deaths 
That's the difference between the minimum observed and the expected. One is almost certain that there are at least 1,438 because that's the difference between the, uh, the, the minimum observed and the maximum expected. Now, so the one thing I didn't make clear here is actually um, the, the value of the, the observed, which is the, which is the, I mean, that's the... The dark blue. Yeah, the, the it's because I'm colorblind, yeah, the, the, the actual observed. They actually, they call that, that in itself is not an actual observation. That's also what they call a 95, that's also a 90, that's also um, the lower 95% prediction for the adjusted observed number of deaths. So what they're saying is we're not, so they're not even absolute, then what they're saying is we're not, we can't be absolutely sure what the actual number of deaths were, right? So that, we also have to give that as a distribution. And by giving the lower value, the lower percentile of that distribution, they mean that we can be confident that it's at least this number. So again, that's also a kind of a minimum of the actual number of observed. So right, can I just clarify my understanding so yeah. far then, Norman? The, 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 this top line here, the dark blue line, yeah, that's the minimum number of deaths that actually died in terms of people dying. Yeah, yeah, because that's that's they're, they're saying we're also not sure exactly what that is because we have to adjust that. Although I think there's something wrong there. I think they should be any adjustments about the uncertainty should be made on the on the you know, on the other. Uh, on the other uh, distribution but for some reason they say they have to make this um yeah. uh, this adjustment but you can take it that that's the, that's that's the least number of actually that yeah. they're pretty confident that, that the actual number of observed deaths is at least that number so anytime this dark blue line is above the light blue line at the bottom here yeah then it's, it's above it, the it's, average it's, expected it's, it's probable that there's more deaths yeah, and if it's Anytime above the, the dark blue line is above the red line, it's almost certain that there's exactly that, that's it. Yeah, sorry, I was a bit yeah getting, getting a bit confusing there, but that that's it. That's that's basically it. Well, that, that that's quite a frightening graphic in that case, Norman. Now you've illuminated that. It's um it, it, it is, but what's interesting is that um uh, there's a guy called David, a colleague called David Dixon, who runs his own detailed analysis of the Canadian data, and he looks much more. Uh, closely at this and he says that in actual fact this data misses two main uh, uh, provinces namely Ontario and Quebec and if you um, and he's looked at the excess deaths which include the full range of the data so this is this we're no no longer looking at confidence intervals or anything like that he's just taking the the average values here so what you can see is that he's taken the average values, the average excess death values over a 10 year period. So he looks at 2000. If you look at 2018, 2019, yeah. right, these are non there were no covid deaths here. So these are non covid deaths. The orange, the orange are the non covid excess deaths. And the grey or whatever colour that is are the overall, the all cause deaths. So, of course, 2018, 19, there were no there were no covid deaths. So any excess deaths. Um, were just, you know, there were no... Well, just excess deaths, so they were the yeah, same. It's just excess deaths, so, that, so they're yeah. the same there. So in 2018-19, you can see there were a few more. Um, I'm looking at, I'm trying hard to find it. What was it? There's about 22,000, just about 22,000 in each of 2018-19. Yeah. More than, let's say, were the average in the previous eight or so years. Mm. But look what happens in 2020, 2021 and well, 2000. it's dramatic, Norman, isn't it? Dramatic increases. It is, because although while in 2021, quite a lot of the excess deaths were due to COVID, there are still mm. a lot of others which weren't, which were some, you know, there's an increase in the other non-COVID uh, excess deaths. And that goes up and up quite dramatically in 2021 and 2022. So 2021, we're lo actually looking at, I can see that's 34,276 non-COVID excess deaths. Yeah, and 2022, it's 55,991 non-COVID excess deaths. Exactly. And people who say, well, maybe this, there might be some necessary adjustments to the population. But, but given, look at, what, look at the 2018, 2019, they were, yeah, they were above the previous year's average, but not by that much. And they were pretty much the same. It was pretty stable there. And then suddenly you've got these jumps from, you know, going up ever upwards from, uh, 2020 onwards. So that graphic's telling me, Norman, we've definitely got an excess in non-COVID uh, deaths 
resulting in a huge overall increase in excess deaths when we combine the deaths that we could argue about the deaths, how attributable they are to COVID or not, whether they're just mentioned on the, on the death certificate. But ignoring that, exactly. we've got a big uh, increase that. in excess deaths. How should we go about investigating this? I don't know. And remember, indeed, as you, as you mentioned there, the, the, the COVID deaths are with COVID, not because of COVID. So a lot yeah. of those won't be directly caused by COVID. So th- this is yet another. I mean, we're seeing this in the UK as well. I mean, we're, we've yeah. got a similar, we've got a very similar pattern there, and um, yeah, this is a this is a problem. I mean, I mean, could this be one factor that's causing the excess deaths, or do you suspect it's multiple factors? Or uh, we, well, mean... we've got we've got the uh, the well known uh, medical intervention, which um, doesn't seem to have been as safe and as effective as as claimed. You know, we've got the impact of the lockdowns uh, and, of course, all of the, um, you know, the missed uh, appointments, you know, uh, cancer screening, all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, that there, there are there are those. Um, <laughs> yeah, th- those those would seem to be the, the obvious, uh, the obvious explanations for, for those excess deaths. Whatever the explanation is, I think you and me can agree that this needs investigated in Canada and the United Kingdom and indeed other countries around the world as a matter of urgency. These aren't numbers on a graph. These are people's lives, aren't they? They are. And it does seem curious that given the kind of like the hysteria that was um, surrounded the excess deaths due to COVID in, in 2020 or claimed to be COVID, when actually now seeing actually a much higher number mm. of excess deaths which are non-covid so you know if people the governments were so worried about those covid you know the excess deaths due to covid why aren't they even more worried about these non-covid excess deaths that we're seeing now and i'm not i'm not hearing a thing about these excess deaths in in uh, media if, if you're watching in canada do leave us comments please about the degree, degree to which this is being covered by, by mainstream media. But in the United Kingdom, I can't see of virtually nothing in mainstream media, I would say, Norman. Would you agree with that? There's, uh, I think that's fair to say, yeah, it's not, it's not been discovered. Well, well, actually, that's not strictly true because um, I think if you scroll down in the article, we, we, I picked up uh, one of the, the few or the, where you do see some information about where there's some media about excess deaths. Yeah, you can see this thing here. Oh, yeah, so, the Daily Mirror. So there was an article, yeah, in the Daily Mirror where Brits are dying in their tens of thousands, and we don't know why. And <laughs> there's, there's of course, no mention about the, um, uh, the possible explanation of the, 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 of this, of the well-known uh, medical intervention. Um, but there is um, mention, there's a, there's a Professor Coleman quoted there, and he, he's one of these who doesn't seem to understand why, but he does offer, um, he, he offers some potential uh, reasons for the excess death spikes. He says that Britain, maybe Britain's getting, uh, getting older and gaining a larger average body mass index. So apparently, according to him, you know, a, a possible explanation for this sudden increase in excess deaths since the... Um, since the start of 2021 are, you know, suddenly people have got much older very quickly and are gaining, um, you know, getting fatter very quickly. I, I don't know why. I would why have thought be, increase in yeah. age was a linear process that happened at a standardised rate. It, well, exactly. You, you would think that. <laughs> so, I mean, it, this is what's really bemusing about this. Yeah. Some of the expo- explanations in inverted commas that we've been hearing about are so patently absurd. It is, but this is it. This is you, you say what this is what you see. If you see it at all, you see this this completely is baffling. What can possibly be doing this? Is it is it maybe climate change has been has been offered as a sudden as another explanation? I think I've even seen explanations like people not taking their statins and stuff like that. I mean, oh, yeah, so we've got this sudden yeah. yeah it's really yeah. curious, isn't it? Really is quite interesting and. I th- I, I'm sensing your frustration, Norman, because it's the same as mine. Why isn't this being investigated as a matter of absolute yeah. international urgency? It should be, and I, and I don't know why, and, and I don't know why those who are talking about it and, and presenting feasible explanations are being censored for doing so. Indeed. And, and yet explanations which are less than rational are, are being published. Yep, of course, because that doesn't challenge that wouldn't challenge the uh, narrative. Indeed. 
Professor, as always, enlightening. Thank you very much. Links to your Substack, um, is, is that a publicly uh, available in the public domain? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So it's where where are the num it's where are the numbers? Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah where are the numbers dot substack dot com. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll post that, and and your YouTube channel's available as well. Then. Yeah, for yeah, people right. to watch more enlightening uh, numerical uh, empirical truths. Yeah. Professor, thank you as always. Great to talk. Thanks.